Again, let's do it. Yeah. Saturday night at the Gabba, <laughs> Brisbane, a dollar thirty six. Carlton, three dollars thirty five. Rank outside is just the way we should be. <laughs> Nineteen and a half is this line. The over under is one hundred sixty six, hundred sixty seven. Same as the other game, which is kind of weird. Very weird. And I feel like they're both very low. Mm. Can we start there with the over unders? Yes. Very low over unders. Might just multi both the over unders as the best bet of the weekend. Yeah. Oh. Might just do that right now. <laughs> but the vibe, I think, going into this, we don't stand much of a chance. Uh, the Lions beat the Blues 174 early this year. Yep. That wasn't Marvel. Carlton have not beaten. Brisbane at the Gabba since I believe 2013. Yeah. Absolutely, Statsky. yeah. I had to look at that before. 2013. They haven't played there. Stats guy was just a much. twinkle in Mark McKellen's eye. <laughs> 2013. We're getting later and later. He's how only nine years old. How am I on a punting show? <laughs> uh, but the way that they did that as well, at Marvel, you would have figured Carlton, this was like the beginning of the real down period for the Blues as well. Yeah. It's like yes. round eight. The, the Schneid was in full effect at this point. And yeah, it's lost out. <laughs> now he's the Messiah. <laughs> exactly. Hits its nadir basically as, uh, what, round 12, King's birthday weekend. And it's sort of a weird setup because they smashed them at Marvel. The big yeah. story from that game was obviously Cripps being towed up by Dunkley. But that's also Dunkley playing at Marvel. Basically, he's like favourite place on earth. Yeah, he played I mean, a lot of the dogs. He'd been trying to get out of the Western Bulldogs for a long time. Yeah, so. but, but he, not specifically. He, Marvel, his yeah. stats at Marvel yeah, were unreal, absolutely yeah. unreal. Yeah, yeah. So this sort of weird mix goes back up to the Gabba. I think you'll see a pretty free flowing game. This might be where Carlton actually kicked more than like eight goals in a game, which is kind of nice. Uh, I do not think Carlton can keep up. That's just kind of the problem. We just don't have enough. You've, you've literally now, yeah. won due to your opposition's inefficiencies in the last two games. Yep. Yeah. And we haven't been out of a trust uh, your mate, Harry McFive, all season. But I feel like if you're going to keep this close, he has to kick at least two or three. But he's not going yeah. to. Well, I don't know. It's he's probably sure. worth probably worth a look at Harry McFive. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> One Harry. last time. We're going back into the breach. <laughs> That's why I mentioned Harry McFive, best bet of the week. <laughs> oh, I love it. What's he'd show it all. He'd, just, he'd be sitting there. He'd be just look staring at, what, at the camera uh, going, yeah. <laughs> I, that out your nose. I can't believe he didn't do it once. Or, or yeah, he should have against North Melbourne, yeah. but he kicked it out in the full from a meter out. <laughs> he kicked into the roof. Uh, you can't even... Oh, no, that's a dip. Other ones here for this, though, in terms of player props. <laughs> Joe Hume, Danaher, four goals. Hugh McCluggage, 27 in three straight against Carlton, and he's kicked a goal in five of his last six. So McCluggage, 25 and a goal, is an absolute layup. Never trust a dude with three Gs in his name. <laughs> okay. I've known that one before. I'll no, keep it, I'll you keep know, it in mind. we used that when he let us down at Marvel against oh, Collingwood. Yeah, he yeah, absolutely right. broke my heart in that one. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Lockie Neal averages 27 against Carlton in 13 games in his career. He's actually, weirdly enough, got 10 goals as well in those 13 games, really? which is like a weird one for Lockie. Because he doesn't kick goals. Exactly. Yeah, Just yeah. sort of sneaks forward against the Blues. He had 32 last year. The weird thing is, I think you'll see a stat floating around that he's got 31 plus in five straight home games against the Blues. Yeah. Four of those are with Frio. So yeah. it's a little bit, he hasn't a played little, that, bit yeah. on the nose. He's only played against the Blues once at the Gabba, and that was when he racked up 32, but he still had 32 last yeah. year. Yeah. So I don't mind Neil to go hammer and songs because if there's anything Carlton can do, it can let one opposition midfielder just run absolutely rampant. And they just try to contain that back 50, you know? It's kind of Brisbane at the Gabba. They absolutely will tear you apart. Yep. I think Neil will be at the forefront of that. Joey Danaher, two plus in 15 straight night games at the Gabba. That oh, seems like a pretty good stat and pretty awesome. pertinent because it's a night game at the Gabba. <laughs> <laughs> so two plus. Yeah, boom. Twi it's twilight. We'll but I don't mind Danaher. Like, <laughs> the thing is, like, if we could have two Jacob Weederings, I'd feel pretty good about Carlton. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's only one enough time Jacob to Weedering. <laughs> uh, Chucky Cameron, two plus goals in six straight games as well. We love him. I think they're the two they're going to be tearing up the Blues. I think Hipwood, I can't really trust him. The other one, I think, is obviously Lincoln McCarthy. He's got a goal in eight straight games too. Zach Bailey kicked four in that Marvel game earlier this season. Ew. Him to kick three is $7 just as a standalone. Ooh. He is that sort of weird-sized mid, what, half-forward half forward, flanker. Yeah, yeah. Basically just sort of runs a little bit rampant. Typical Brisbane guy. Like, just looks the same as five of them. <laughs> Flat track bullies. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's how they go. Like. But I think that's the sort of thing, because, like, Carlton's back half flankers, like, you've got the likes of Saad, Doherty, Newman. Hello, Hello Newman. Newman. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly, like, inter and Mitch McGovern, et, et cetera. Yep. Like, if Bailey's the sort of dude that can sort of carve that up, then he could get loose again yeah. pretty easily. Uh, but I think you've also got, I think, was it Chucky also had four, I think, in that game, right? So... 
I think that's where Carlton will really struggle. I think Chucky has a day out. He might kick six and it wouldn't really come as a massive six. surprise. <laughs> Maybe. Small forwards. It's the one thing that Carlton are just like, ah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. A lot of your halfbacks love to attack. Yep. So there's sometimes you get caught on got a, We've got like eight different and rebounding if Cameron half is on the counter No, no actual tagging yep. back yeah. pocket. If Cameron's on the counter attack, there's no one catching him. <laughs> like unless they're throwing like Fogarty or someone out the back. Brody Kemp maybe. That's sort of- He's been pretty good. It, Brody yeah. Kemp's been handy, but yeah. I just feel huh. like Chucky, the overhead yeah. marking, he should just- slice Just leading dice. up as well. So Too I quick. think you go Danaher at the two plus- I go Chucky probably with a four plus and go from there. You throw Lincoln McCarthy in there for at least a goal. Probably Bailey as well because you probably get one at least. Just the attacking nature of Brisbane at the Gabba, which is too good. Oh, and this current defense absolutely. has been good. It's like what top four defense all season. Yeah, yep. pretty handy. We've got as we mentioned, like the rebounding back halfman. You'd probably go Newman, Doherty, and Saad. Probably twenty five for Newman, twenty for Doc. 24 Saad. Saad, yeah. Around their averages, yeah. Just because there's going to be that much ball in the back half that they're just going to have to – it'll be panic stations a lot of the time, a lot of panic handballs and sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, and up front, Jack Martin, if he's hopefully back, he will be. He will be. He's not injured, yeah. Uh, I'd just leave out Harry and – Apparently they're Jack. not going to, but yeah. Well, you've got to bring back. You're paying him a million bucks a year. You've got that's to play. The how, that's not how it works. But it's yeah. not exactly how yeah. it works, but that's I know how Alex saying. thinks it works. He's yeah. like, oh, well, he's getting paid a lot. Well, it's I mean, like, Brody Grundy's really getting paid a lot of money and he's exactly. just going to walk true, his way yeah. to Sydney. But also Jack- Harry does actually help Charlie get off the chain yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah you just That's said, why. I mean, he's the most expensive decoy in the world. You can send Harry like halfway up the wing Yeah, just to take a clunker. Well, he took a bunch of them. In the final against the Swans. Could yep. they even play him on the wing so he doesn't have to have a set shot? Oh, shut up, Matthew Richardson. <laughs> but that's what? kind of is that what he said? That's no, kind that's of what the, he did. The oh, kind of vibe right. from that of sending it means that Charlie doesn't have to go and do that. And like have your, you know, have your main kid thrust kicker. saving clunker on yes. the wing where you're like, Oh god, we needed that. True. And then you, you look at the forward fifty and you've got no one there. And so. Tom McCartan zoned off and takes an intercept mark. Okay, Harris <laughs> so, Andrews. Yeah. I feel like Charlie didn't have a great game last time. He only had the one goal, I think. And he's been pathetic since he won the Coleman. I think it's more about yeah, just he the, has. Yeah, hasn't got near it. I think it's more about the structure and how like who he's playing, right? So well, he played last week obviously against the Demons. They have towed him up literally every time, every time yeah. he's played them. Yeah. Swans and the same. Swans, same sort of vibe. So you're going against Brisbane. It's but also a little bit different. I think he just has this more to himself. And I think he could elite. probably get you to about two or three, but there's just no value in it. So go the Martin two plus. I think there's another T D K T D K goal, Tom Nicone. Yeah, even him uh, T D K for uh, fifteen plus we were uh, talking that about. That was your as well. disposal count, which yeah, I, I really liked. like. He's got that in four of the last five weeks, which is very good for a rock. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And I think otherwise, like the goal kick is I'm just staring clear of the blues ones. I think the one thing that I want to lean on is probably my favorite little double up, which is Chera, twenty five plus and a goal. Ooh. Actually gets to over five dollars. Huh. Okay. So Chera was had a couple of nice forward. little pings, mm. had that great goal against the Swans, uh, was really good basically last two weeks as well. Yeah. I think he gets plenty of the ball up there at the Gabba. Cripps, I don't want a bar of it. Don't trust him. He's I just don't know. so beaten up as well. He yeah. is. He's got a broken nose he basically. Got, he's been he's, smashed for the last two weeks. I was going to say two years. <laughs> no, but like even more so the yeah. last two weeks. Yeah. Sam yeah. Walsh, 35 plus touches is $2.65. Uh, yeah, I could see that. I think that could happen. Uh, but I think essentially what it all boils down to is I think the Lions can score 100 points. I don't think Carlton can. Well, it's it's Carlton have averaged just shy of 11 goals in their last six games. Brisbane averaged 102 points a game at the Gabba this yeah. year. Let, let's be realistic. Take out, you know, Carlton pride aside. Brisbane are going to run straight through them. If they play to their best, they'll win this by 40, 50 yeah. points. You just but hope that Brisbane played down to Carlton. Yeah, it just depends yeah. if they kick out. But, but if Brisbane play like they did against Port in that second yeah. half, this – uh, a lot of Carlton fans will be turning off yeah. their TV halfway through the third quarter. Yeah. Including me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, stats guy, first goal kickers. First goal kickers. Uh, yeah, going to have a look. Who was my first one? Ch- Chucky Cameron. you got to have a look at him. I know he's only $9, but he's got the most uh, on the ground in the last five seasons. Nine first goals. He's just elite. That isn't a lot when you think about it. Across the last it. five like seasons, not that games. a lot, but it's still more than anyone else. Uh, I think, yeah, Charlie uh, Kerno is obviously the second one. He's only $6.50. Not good value at all there for first goal, but it's probably the only thing that has a little bit of value for Kerno. Uh, and then Tom DeConing. He actually hasn't kicked the first goal, but he kicked the first goal for the Blues last week, and he's been absolutely awesome lately. He had 15 and two goals last week, and he's been kicking accurately. At the start of the season, he had a couple of games, 0-3, 0-2, 0-1. He had a – I remember there was a shot right? on the wing like directly in front of me, yep. I think maybe the Eagles game, 
And it's like, this is just a get right game. And he just like sprayed it. You're like, bro. Yeah, felt like a Ruckman sort of kick. Yeah. Very Ruck yeah. kick kind of vibes. And you're like, all right, man. But he looked so much like tighter. He was dead eye. Yeah, it was yeah. like awesome last week. Yeah, so, so 5 1 uh, in his last six scoring shots. Nice. So if he's going to, he's been pushing forward a lot. I think he's going to push forward early, especially if you win, uh, Carlton win the first clearance. 21 bucks is a bit, a bit better value there. I like that. <laughs> um, I love the Charlie Cameron one, though. Nine Yeah, nine bucks. That is, I can easily see him getting just a takes crumb. A mark in Country a, road, it's going off. Takes a mark <laughs> just in the forward pocket, swings around bang off yep. you go pack her up um any other names that we didn't sort of mention there what do you feel uh, i'm gonna have a little something on jasper flesher get 20 disposals at five bucks 75 he's been really he good, was yeah. fantastic mm. in that uh qualifying final against port hasn't hit the 20 in his career yet but a lot of like 19 17 16s throughout his first season just a couple more would be nice but i feel like the way he's playing given that 15 plus is a dollar 78 i'm gonna take the risk at 575 also just to break jim's heart again joe danaher <laughs> five plus at ten dollars it's not horrible. <sighs> yeah, it is isn't. They've horrible. got so many options. Like, just set a block on we're doing, and then they've got three other guys out there. So they he's do. just super long, lanky arms just going, it's, yeah, another one. Yeah. It's the Lions Hydra. It sucks. Like, yeah. They've just got so many different ways to beat you, especially up there. And let's let's be realistic. The Brisbane Lions do not win this. This is one of the biggest disappointments yeah. in possibly the last decade of football. I think oh, also be the they, greatest Carlton well, win in yeah, years. Yeah, like, great, great for Carlton winning. <laughs> After the Blues run right through, go the Bears! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane 40 Brisbane. plus three dollars fifteen. Oh. Forty plus. I don't know about I don't know. Well, you're fired. So. <laughs> the only way Carlton are gonna win is if they kick uh Brisbane kick inaccurately, which I have done before. Yeah, but stats got Maybe we could just mind trick and not as a gap. Not as a say Brisbane have like 40 shots. Yeah. They'll still kick 16 <laughs> goals. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel great about this. Uh Brisbane at the line is probably my pick. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't because even like if you wanted to go Carlton, I'd at the line, I just don't know if they'll keep it close enough. I think it's something like it could be like two goals in it at three quarter time, and then Brisbane just run away with yeah, it. Yeah, it's not a massive line. Like, yeah, oh uh, yeah, they were better than us all day. Oh well. Yeah, it could be close up until I reckon. Yeah, last sort quarter. of like what they what port what they did to Port. It was close, and then they just went. <laughs> That's cute. Bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it exactly. does very much feel like that. Uh, but in terms of like Brisbane games, just the way that they've played at the Gabba, it's yeah. just it's. It's just Thanos vibes, right? It's yeah, like Thanos. inevitable. It's like you can't stop it. Can't stop it. Um, like I think it was was it that round two Melbourne game, right? Back at the start of the year. Yeah, where they were 40 points up when the lights went out. Yeah. The lights went out, baby, when the lights <laughs> go out. <laughs> That's when Carlton are going to stumble into the bedroom drunk. I don't want to know. Right, and then fall asleep. <laughs> it's going to be unreal. Uh, I'm going Brisbane. Yeah, yeah, I think Brisbane. you have to go Brisbane. I'm going to go Brisbane and the over, though. It's just $2.30 over that 167 and a half. Brisbane 40 plus and the over. I think Brisbane are going to get at least 100. They very, yeah, yeah usually well, get around average 100. Average 102. And then, and then, or 110. 110 to 60. Yeah. Bang. But then, and Carlton usually get around that 60 to 70. You got the over, so. Yeah. I think it's really simple. Just like the offensive output of Carlton this year has been Not great. very much this. Mm. And when they had like a little bit of a run, it came against, what, Gold Coast at the G. And yeah. a lot of it was just based around them playing at the G and demolishing some half decent teams here and there, putting up a half decent score against like a hobbled port, that sort of thing. Yeah. But like when they do win, like against good teams like Collingwood or Melbourne or something, it's Low because scoring, they just yeah. strangled the life out of the game. And mm. I just can't see that happening in the Gabba. So, yeah, I agree. There we go. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.